Dudes to Dads is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We are back. I'm Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads. Again. <laughs> <laughs> episode 110 110 yes that's pretty cool you know what our last episode was about attention yes so this is kind of piggybacking on attention in yeah. a sense okay that it's 11 reasons why young children misbehave hmm. and what to do about it okay so I compiled this list. Um, I felt like a little bit of the last episode was unfinished. Okay. So I don't know why. To, like I just, yeah, there was like some points I didn't feel, you know, that's what happens with when you record it. It's like, oh, I should have said this or I should have said that. <laughs> right. Um, and that's the beauty of it is we can come back and do more. So, exactly. Um, it's a continuing saga. Yeah. So one of the things is, you know, I mean, obviously you're, why children misbehave. One of them is they want attention. So it's kind of, it's, it's related in that sense. Mm. But um, more specifically, I, I think especially um, dads with young kids, they don't really understand why the child is misbehaving. Right. You know, they don't understand what's going on and, and quite frankly, don't know what to do when the child does misbehave. Sure. I mean, it's a that's a problem. And so when you don't have that information, mm. um, that's the case. And so there's typically only a handful of reasons why children misbehave. Right. I mean, the overarching thing could be to get attention, but there are some other things. Mm -hmm. So I want to touch on those, um, get some feedback from you. And then also what can the parent or the dad do about it, uh, to help fix it or help eliminate it, reduce it. However you want to say. Yeah. Okay. So number one, the kid's just tired. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I mean, all. literally, yeah. it's that simple. And yeah. I think a lot of parents know that when the child, you know, it's a baby. Yeah. Like, hey, you know what? The baby's tired. Hey, at six o'clock, they start, you know, getting restless and Fidgety whatever. And yeah. And so they kind of know. The problem is, is that continues. Right. That doesn't just end when they're one yeah. or three. <laughs> um, as kids get older, you know, and they're going to school and the same, I mean, the same thing applies. Now, kids will... This doesn't apply to every single kid in every single situation, mm -hmm. but for many being tired just makes them misbehave. Yeah. That's, we get know, grumpy and yeah, yeah, they're totally grumpy. So sure. what do they do? Just make them go to bed <laughs> or, you know, get on a better schedule. Yeah. You know, that's something too. It's like when, you know, um, you know, and, and I see it, it's like, we have a bedtime stuff happens where you don't get to bed. You can feel it the next day, mm -hmm. you know, especially if it's accumulative. I mean, it's like two or three days that happens. It's like, for sure there's something going on. And right. then, you know, by the late afternoon, you're like, Whoa, okay. They're going to go to bed early tonight. <laughs> you know? Right. So that can happen. And that's kind of an obvious one. Um, a second one, they want to assert their independence or control. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as a child begins, I'd say three, four into five, they start becoming defiant. You know, you say the word, no, they, they don't care. Right. Um, all kind, and all they're doing is challenging and trying to control the situation. Um, they're, they want to start understanding their independence. And this happens... So I've heard <laughs> even like at an accelerated rate when they're teenagers. Oh, right. You know, yeah. cause that's when they really want to be independent. Yeah. And that's when hormones start kicking in. All so they're going to, yeah, the, the natural propensity to want to rebel is augmented by these hormones that yes. are telling them to do things. Yes. So yeah. an answer to that is to give the child choices. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens is they want to have control. So what you do is you give them multiple choices that you're okay with all the answers, mm -hmm. you know? And so what'll happen is instead of saying, get upstairs and the child says, no, you say, would you like to go upstairs? Like a, like a, uh, you know, a cheetah or a turtle, Right. you know, we've, we've said that, we like, I mean, that's with a smaller child, but then those choices become even greater, you know, when the child is a little bit older and you're saying like, they, you know, you say, Hey, you need to do your homework. Okay. Well, and they's like, no, that's not an option. Would you like to do your homework in the kitchen table on the kitchen table or up on your, in your room at your desk? <laughs> yeah. 
it, it's strange and it sounds a little weird, but it's true. Like it still allows them to make a decision. Right. And that's what they want. They want the choice. They want to be able to, to be in control. Mm -hmm. And when you give them options and you give them choices now, smart kids or smart aleck kids will sometimes say, well, I don't like any of those options. Yeah. What about plan and B? You, and yeah, plan C. C. You have to stick to your guns and say, well, those are the options, mm -hmm. you know, and then it becomes a little bit of an issue, but, and that happens. Right. Um, you know, they'll say, well, I don't like any of those. We'll say, well, those are the options right now. So would you, and you just repeat it, you know, or you don't even say, you don't even have, you don't even have to say those are the options. You just repeat it again. <laughs> Cheetah, you know, <Yeah>. turtle. <laughs> Cheetah, turtle. <laughs> Cheetah, turtle. I mean, I can keep going. Um, it's just, it's something you just gotta, you gotta stick with. Yeah. Um, number three, they really don't understand the rules. So they can be misbehaving. Uh, they just really don't understand that you're not supposed to be talking right now. Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes you just got to educate them. Yeah. As yeah to nobody, the nobody proper, told them <laughs> the proper etiquette. Yeah. I didn't know that. Right. Um, so you got to be sure to explain. Or I don't have a lot of experience right. in this world. <laughs> right. So we, you know, in our family too, like we post a rules, like these are the family rules, you know, and they're all in a positive way. Pretty mm -hmm. much. It's not like, you know, things like what not to do. <laughs> it's what to do. Yeah. You know, so be loving, be, you know, all this stuff, um, you know, and it's like, well, is hitting on there. Cause you're not. You know, that's not on the, the list. <laughs> well, I can't um, make a rule for everything in the universe. <laughs> right. But they start to understand rules. In fact, I was thinking of writing a book called 1,000 Times. And the subtitle is like... It's just 1,000 things. That's how many, well, that's how many times you have to tell your kids to do something before right. they begin to understand yeah. it. Yeah. Literally 1,000. You know, three years, every day. Spart maybe Simpson writing on the chalkboard. Right. They'll, they'll then kind of get the concept. <laughs> sure. So understanding it, it's one thing to hear it. It's another thing to kind of understand it and do that. So, you know, maybe you have to post rules, maybe you have to really explain it, whatever, but that's a reason that they're going to misbehave is they just, they just don't know. Yeah. They don't know. So number four, they're bored. Mm -hmm. So what'll happen is they'll just, they'll misbehave to get attention, to make it exciting, whatever. And basically they're just really bored. Sure. So a way to combat that is to, you know, our, our tendency as parents is to provide solutions for them. I would, I, I would say that that's not the best thing to do. And instead ask them questions mm -hmm. on, you know, uh, so what are some things that you do like to do? Or, you know, what are some things outside that you might be able to do right now or give them choices again, you know, same kind of thing. Right. Um, you know, you don't want to always be responsible for their entertainment. You want them to be able to entertain themselves. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes can be difficult when they're an only child or something like that. Like, you know, I'm, you know, with our kids, they can kind of entertain each other You're right. so they can play with each other if nothing's else around. But when the child's boring, it's just they're not taking responsibility for the fact that they're just not doing something. <laughs> you know, you have to take responsibility for your boredom. That's what my mom always said. Yeah. Um, and say, I'm boring. I need to figure something out, you know, I need to entertain myself. Yeah. And so that's something that you, you know, you can help foster that by saying, Hey, well, what about these choices? But you don't want to always be the person doing that. You mm -hmm. want them to be able to entertain themselves. So that is an often, you know, a reason why they might misbehave is they're just, they just, it's boredom. Yeah. You know? And that's pretty exciting to misbehave. So. <laughs> Um, number five, and this kind of goes along with the rules, but which you had touched on is just number five. They just lack skills. Mm -hmm. So unlike, understanding rules they just don't know what to do so you know when they're young maybe their brain hasn't developed that part yet sure um they just haven't had enough practice like you said, i'm like hey i'm four yeah, i haven't been yeah, doing sure. this very long i've been alive very long um so our job and solution there is is to teach them what they need to know yeah. you know and if they don't if they just lack the skill to be able to handle it and they're, they're misbehaving, it could be out of frustration. Sure. You know, just not knowing what to do. Um, that could be frustration. It's just, you know, be empathetic and saying, Hey, you know, I can see that's frustrating for you. Um, you know, I, I, I let's can figure totally, it out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's figure it out together, you know, and, and I'll show you, I'll show you what you need to do. So that's something. Um, number six, can't relate to this one at all. Uh, your expectations are too high. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> As we both laugh. Yes. Um, you know, the, you're questioning like, is this normal child behavior or am I have, you know, do I have completely unrealistic expectations right. that yeah. my two year old should be sitting quiet in a restaurant? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You know, oh, that you mean they don't sit quiet in a restaurant. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> so having unrealistic expectations 
for sure that's an issue. Uh, answer there, easy one. Lower yeah. your expectations. Lower, yeah, exactly. Or stop having expectations. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, most things, it's funny when people ask questions, like especially in the meetup and stuff, and they're like, well, my child's doing this and it feels... That's what every child does. Like it's normal, sure. you know, unless there is some sort of medical condition or it's like a, an extreme of some kind. Right. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, I don't like the saying like kids will be kids, but it does make a lot of sense in a yeah. lot of situations. Right. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't pay attention to it or try to rectify it in some way. It just means that th- that's normal. Don't freak out. Yeah. You want to give them an alternative, mm-hmm. you know, um, that that's a one thing of, um, recently an example in my parenting class, uh, a, a, a woman was talking about her child and their friend were on a keyboard making, um, some really inappropriate statements about another third child or about another child. Mm -hmm. And, and she got really upset, took the keyboard and was like, you guys can't do this, but you know, whatever. So the problem was they didn't really realize what they were doing. Mm -hmm. So she was trying to teach them. And so collectively everybody was coming up with solutions and things like that. And so one of the solutions was, Maybe provide because they thought it was really funny to say these mean things. Yeah, is say you know, hey, how could we say something funny that's not going to be mean to somebody? You know, and, and kind of teaching them that that was the wrong thing to say sure. without just like yelling at them. And so that was a moment like that where they just really didn't understand that that was something that's really mean to say and could hurt someone's feelings. Right. You know, they're young children. Sure. Um, so those kinds of things of just giving alternative choices, mm-hmm. you know, and us as parents, rather than getting upset, can say, well, what about if you tried this? Mm-hmm. You know, that that's something that can happen. Yeah. Um, number seven, they saw it somewhere else. So, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Could be friends. Could be you. As a parent. <laughs> right, yeah. um, you want to explain again what you want to see, not what you don't want to see. Right. So same thing. Uh, Lead by example. Yeah. It, well, but also show. Yeah. Just showing them the positive, not necessarily not to do the negative. Right. You know, here's what you should be doing or here's how I would like to see it. So and, and yeah, that's sort of common of. Sure. You're going to run into that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, number eight. They don't know how to control their emotions. Mm-hmm. Very common. Totally common with kids. Yeah. Kids going to act up. They really don't know how to act or how to feel. When they, they might be angry, sad, whatever, they don't know how to control it or channel it. Regulate it. Yeah. They don't have a barometer. They just express. Yeah. And that's, you know, especially with like really little kids, like babies, it's it's, it's super happy or just crying yeah. and they don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm upset for some reason. And then as they get older, they, they understand certain behaviors, but they're still trying to test things out, trying to figure out where the extremes are. Yeah. So, so important things you can do in those kind of situations is, is teaching them how to calm themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one technique I was taught was, um, smell the flower, blow out the candle, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, breathing in, smelling the flower, <laughs> breathing out, blow out the candle. And so I was teaching my children how to do that. And so, yeah, Hey, you breathe or, you know, another thing was grabbing your shirt really tight instead of hitting somebody, <laughs> you know, you're grabbing onto your shirt. Cause yeah. you, you mean, you want to make sure that they understand that emotions are okay. Yeah. That, that you don't want to stifle them having emotion, but it's channeling that emotion to deal with it in an appropriate way. Right. So whether they need to go in the corner and be quiet and calm themselves and just sit, sit in a calming chair, um, you know, it's taking deep breaths, it's holding onto your shirt, whatever that is, mm-hmm. is they, they just don't know what to do with that emotion, mm-hmm. you know, can is emotions a, and a powerful thing. Right. So teaching them good ways to channel it is important. Right. Right. So, uh, number nine, they're hungry. <laughs> That's another one. Yeah. Or as we say in our, fa- in our house, hangry, hangry. Yeah. <laughs> Been hearing that a lot. Yeah. You're so uh, hungry. You're angry. Yeah. And, and, and that's a real one too. Blood sugar low, oh, yeah. however it is. Yeah. It goes right up there with the tired thing. Yeah. Especially with the kids. So, you want to make sure that they're eating snacks if they need them, you know, appropriate, um, you know, just don't go too long without food. Sure. You know, it's healthy for a child to snack. Like that's what they want to do. And yeah. you know, we as, as adults probably have more of a tendency to eat our three meals or five, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, kids are often, you know, they, they 
aren't hungry at the meals. And so we do that. I, I've, I'm guilty of that where I'm like, okay, well, there's no snack because I want to make sure they eat their meal. Yeah. The problem is, is that they're really hungry. Yeah. At, like as an example is after school, they're mm-hmm. always hungry oh, after yeah, school. Yeah. When you say, no, I'm sorry, you can't and, eat, yeah. you know, cause I want them to eat dinner, <laughs> you know? It just doesn't seem right. And yeah, you, you can see that they're going to, yeah, they're going to misbehave or they're going to be hungry, hangry. <laughs> um, so you want to make sure that you're allowing them to snack sure. or now, you know, make it a healthy snack. And then, you know, for dinner that we're going to probably eat less. Yeah. You know, that's just, that's how it goes. Sure. Um, so um, the number 10, which is kind of the basis of a lot of this is they just want attention. Mm-hmm. So they're going to misbehave to get that. You know, See the last episode for all that. Yeah. Yeah. Go to, uh, <laughs> episode 109, uh, episode 108, 108. 108. Yeah. Um, so, well, they hear the thing. So when they want attention, the bottom line is just don't give it to them. Yeah. If they're misbehaving, right. You just don't give them the attention. That's mm-hmm. kind of the answer with that one. Um, the last one, number 11 is more of what you're talking about is, They've been rewarded for bad behavior. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're misbehaving. They got negative attention. Right. And so it's been reinforced that the negative behavior works and they get what they want. And so the answer for that one, focus on rewarding the positive behavior. Right. Listen to episode 108. Right. That's that's really the um, probably the, the highlight of this episode Mm -hmm. is, is just like the last one (laughs) is focus on positive behavior rather than the misbehavior. Right. So what do they do? If they want some feedback or or want to give us feedback, they can focus their feedback in, (laughs) in a proper format. Um, podcast at dudesadads.com. You go to Twitter at Dudes to Dads, Facebook, Dudes to Dads com, and then uh, go to iTunes and Stitcher and YouTube subscribe and leave comments especially in the iTunes because it helps with the rankings and helps perpetuate the show. The algorithm. And gets it out to more, more yeah, so we'll speak algorithmic, uh, gets it out to more users and uh, more people discover the show as well. Yeah. So. Well, you know what, I want to thank everybody we've gotten some great listeners great feedback uh, we always appreciate getting emails and, and feedback from people and comments Yeah. Um, you know, and, and a lot of times that's it, it helps come up with ideas for the show for sure, you know, cause it's also good to know what people want to hear. Um, you know, they want to hear more of something. And if that's the case, we'd love to get that feedback because we want to give people what they want. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as it's reasonable. Yeah. You right, know? yeah. And as long as it's interesting, we've had a couple ideas that, you know, Hey, maybe only three people are interested in. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we, we, there's definitely, a, uh, you know, topics that lend themselves to a lot of people learning, right. you know, and, and, and educating people. So absolutely want to, want to make sure we get those topics out. So, uh, with that, Alan, anything else? Final words? Seize the day. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. All right. Well, with that, thank you as always. And uh, we will see you next week. See you next week.